thing. Tell me any place you want me to go. Tell me any seed you want me to sow. Tell me anything that I need to know. I am listening for your voice. If you have called me as a pastor, as an evangelist, as a prophet, as a missionary, I embrace my assignment. I will master the art of learning. If you have called me to prosper in business, as a kingdom investor, anoint my mind, anoint my hands, anoint my relationships. I receive the mantle of Abraham that everything I do will prosper. Do business through me in Jesus' name. If you have called me to the world of government, I receive the anointing of Daniel. I will be an example of righteous rulership and I will bring hope to my nation in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people say, Amen and Amen and Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at someone next to you before you are seated and tell them, I really, really love you. Hallelujah. Then you may take your seat. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm so happy to be in Zimbabwe. What a precious country. What a beautiful nation. What a great nation you are. We have been lied to by the media. The media has told us many negative things. But I've come to see with my own eyes that this is a great nation with great people that God is raising up to impact this world. You are nation changers that is sitting here. And I am blessed to be so close and in relationship with such great, great people. Apostle T and your beautiful wife, Pastor C, you have treated us well. You have honored us in the way you have looked after us. My wife and I go home with good reports. We are excited to tell our people about this great country and this great nation. This is my wife, Pastor Chantal. Will she stand? <laughs> Clap for her. Isn't she lucky to have me? <laughs> oh, glory to God. My wife loves relationships. My wife loves weddings. You have made her day to day by coming in your beautiful outfits and looking so gorgeous. Wow. A woman, let me say, women dream of weddings since they are six years old. They think what they're going to wear, how they're going to look. Their whole lifetime, they think of their dress. It's a big day for a woman. A man only starts thinking six months before the time. And maybe six weeks, they ask him, have you got your suit already? Ah, I'm going to get it, don't worry. The woman is already planning everything. It is so big. It's an institution that God has put in place. Celebrate it. Know this one thing, that you have someone who is for you. God is for your marriage, but you have someone who is against you. He hates your marriage. It's the devil, but he's conquered. Amen. Your marriages will be an example to other people of how a great marriage should be. You will be that example to people. Clap for them one more time. What a great blessing. Hallelujah. We have really enjoyed our time here and we have been teaching on the subject of honor. If you were not here when I was teaching on honor in the marriage, you must get the teaching. I think I did it Thursday night. I spoke about honor in the marriage. 
And uh, I wrote a book. I write different books on the subject of honor. You must always know what you are about. If you don't know what you are about, people won't know what you are about. I am about writing and teaching on this subject of honor that God has given me. What are you about? If your name is mentioned, what do people think of? Everywhere I go when I get an invitation, people know I'm going to teach on honor. If you mention the name Tiger Woods, what do you think of? Golf. If you say David Beckham, you think of soccer. And to all the Liverpool supporters, congratulations on the Champions League that you have won. The Manchester United supporters have something in common. The number six. They end at six. Liverpool has six Champions League trophies. Hmm. But what are you about? If your name is mentioned, what do people think of? If you can't tell me in one sentence what you are about, you don't know what you are about. If you don't know what you are about, people won't know what you are about. And people will never phone you to solve their problems for them. Because they don't know what you are about. If I say the name... Uh, who's the boss of Microsoft? Bill Gates. You immediately think computers. Isn't it? You must find what you are about. It's important. So people know what you are about. If your phone never rings, you must know people don't see you as a problem solver. And the way money comes to you is through problem solving. Amen. You have a great exhibition outside. And those of you that's promoting your businesses, when people think of that business, they must think of you. Your name must come up first. Make sure that you become the best in what you do. You don't have to know everything. But you must know what you are good at. Study it. Build your library around it. Do everything that people know this is what you are about. When I was in the civil engineering industry, I had a manufacturing company. And I manufactured manual covers. And every time people wanted to buy them, they have to think of Clint Ross. My name was one in my industry with manual covers. And so you have to build yourself like that. So that you become a problem solver like that. Amen. Today I want to speak to you for a few minutes on a subject, a place beyond honor. We were talking about honor, how important honor is, and how honor works, and how honor is to different levels. Honor is up to your authority, honor is to your peers. And honor is also down to your subordinates. Many times when we talk about honor, we only think it's to authority. But Paul writes to Timothy and he encourages him that he must be a vessel of honor. Peter says in 1 Peter, you must honor all men. So we must honor everybody, but there's a different way to honor different people. When a child comes to me, I go on my knee and I speak to the child on the level of the child. It's a proof of my honor to the child that I speak on their level. If ever you speak to people on your level and not theirs, it's kind of a proof of your dishonor. You want to engage with people on their level. If you are a minister of the gospel, you never speak to be heard, you speak to be understood. You can rather speak slower but that people understand what you are saying so that the message of the gospel can be heard and understood by everybody. You must always know who you are talking to when you are talking in honor. If I talk to a Sunday school class, I speak different than the way when I speak to bankers or when I speak to business people. When I speak in an auditorium like this, I am aware that there are people on different levels and so you want to accommodate for everyone. It's a proof of my honor to you. 
Amen? Honor up to authority. And God helps us in the Bible to make us understand and see who authority is. He tells us, your parents are your authority. Amen? It's one of the scriptures we know well. Honor your mother and your father that it might go well with you. And that you might live long upon the earth. God also tells us in Ephesians to honor your masters. In those days they called them masters. We call them our bosses today. You need to honor your boss. He's an authority. God says in Romans that we must honor all authorities. Because they have been given by God. Anyone that speaks against authority is speaking against what God has put in place. And such a person will bring judgment on himself if he speaks against authority. Now that is a very challenging scripture. Because many times we have authority that we think they are wrong. And so we challenge them. I'll give you some of my thoughts I was thinking about our government in South Africa. Because you all know and many African countries know how we've been oppressed for many years. And then we fought for our freedom. And I asked the Lord, were those people authorities that you put in place? Because the Bible says that everyone that's in authority is what God has put there. What a question. So I asked the Lord. And then the Lord said to me, there are different times where different authorities come. But you must see what they do when they are there. They do have the negative, but there's also the positive. And he said to me, well, these are the thoughts that came to me. If they never colonized many of our countries, we probably not have the roads that we have today. We probably not have a kind of infrastructure that we have today. Those were my thoughts. It doesn't mean that they were right in the way they treated our people. But then the thought came that anyone who rises up against authority, he brings a judgment on himself. And I just wondered if we are paying a price in South Africa today. For the way we went up against authority even though we thought they were wrong. Maybe there was a different resolution. Maybe there was a different way to do it. But are we paying a price today? Because we became rebels. Just my thoughts. When I think concerning honor. And that all authority has been given by God. I wonder if you are fighting your government today. I wonder if there's a price that we are paying because of the way we are doing it. Or are we fasting and praying and asking God for a proper resolution that our countries can truly be healed in God's way. And not the way we think it should be healed. Just my thoughts. But we need to be people of honor. When you honor up to authority, the blessing of the Lord comes upon you. The Bible says when you honor your mother and your father, it will go well with you. That scripture does not only talk about honoring mother and father. That scripture means that every other authority, that your, your mother and your father is your first authority God gives you on the earth. You don't choose your parents, you discover them. Most authorities you don't choose, you discover them. As a matter of fact, you don't choose your pastor, you discover him. That this is the man that God has placed to take me into my destiny. You don't choose him. And even if there were days that you were mad at your parents, you never walked away from them, you just kept coming home. Why when you get mad at your spiritual parents, you want to leave the church? And not come back home. The devil will do everything to get you out and away from the authority that God has ordained for you. Because he doesn't want you to get to your destiny. 
Because locked up in your past there is the words you need to hear that will get you into the destiny you need to be. Your parents didn't always tell you the words you liked. But those were words to help you and to get you to be where you are today. And so the same God gives you spiritual parents. They won't always tell you the words you like to hear. But those are the words you need to hear to take you into your destiny. And so there are different people that dishonor the house of God by the things they do. One of those people are those who leave you. Those who leave the house of God because they are offended or they are upset with something that has happened is a proof of your dishonor. When you leave a church and you leave a pastor, you are really telling everybody out there that this man can take me no further. He has nothing more to teach me. When it has only been your pride that couldn't take the words of instruction from someone that should be taking you into your destiny. Now the reason why it's hard for us to show honor to authority is because the Bible says in Proverbs 29 verse 23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Your pride is the cause that you cannot sit and receive instruction from another man. Many people I know that was in our church that left, they've amounted to nothing. And I can see, well, there are some people that God has moved on and we have blessed them. When you leave our church and I know you shouldn't go, I don't bless you. You cannot bless something that is not of God. Pastor, bless me. I, I'm telling you, you shouldn't go. You should still stay here. You want to be a rebel. And come against and then I must put my hands on you and bless you. I cannot bless a devil. You break in the house of God. Honor up to your authority is what brings the blessing of the Lord upon your life. Honor to your peers, those on your level, is by celebrating the difference that God has placed in them. We grow up in competition. When we are at school, we grow up running races against one another in our age groups. We play soccer against one another in our age groups. And somehow when we grow up and we even come into the church, we are in competition with those on our level. And so we criticize the anointings God has given other people. We start to speak against them. And it seems that our anointing is the most important anointing upon the earth. If God has blessed you with the, with the anointing to pray for the sick and they do recover. Don't criticize the teacher that God has placed there to teach. God has blessed you with a good voice to sing. Don't criticize the one that God is stirring to, to teach the church in prayer. By me celebrating what is in you, it's a proof of my honor to you and a proof of my honor to God. That I celebrate what God has placed in you. And so I don't speak against you. I draw the gold that's inside of you because you have what I don't have and I have what you don't have. And that's how we complete one another. Because in the kingdom of God, we are not in competition, we're into completion. Glory to God. It's when we come into oneness and the unity. The most beautiful display of honor is seen in the Godhead. There is no competition between Father, Son and Holy Spirit. They celebrate one another and what they do. And the one excel exalts the other one. Jesus said the Spirit will come and not speak of himself. They know how to work in unison. And that's the oneness that God wants us to have in the body of Christ. Where we celebrate one another. Where people say to me, Pastor, I'd like you to come and have a healing crusade. And then I say, I can pray for the sick. But I know a man that God has anointed. I think he will do a better job than me. Yeah. Celebration. 
of your brothers and sisters on your level is a proof of your honor to them. While you are criticizing them, you are dishonoring. And then those beneath you. Have you ever heard people say, I don't, I don't uh, honor my pastor because he does not honor me. Because they think that honor up is the same as honor down. A parent does not give a child the same honor that the child should give the parent. When you are correcting a child, it's the proof of your honor. Because you are interested in the future of a child. So honor down when you are correcting anyone that's under your authority, whether it's in church, whether it's in your company. It's a proof that you want them to be better in their future. If you spoil a child, you have dishonored the child. If you never correct the child, you have dishonored them. So a parent can walk into the room and tell the child, why is your bed not made? You must make up your bed. Because he's trying to teach the child. Neatness. But if the child turns around and say, my bed isn't made because your bed isn't made, that's dishonoring. Honor up doesn't work the same as honor down. If you are honoring anybody beneath you, the last thing you want to give them is money. Because money is based on a reward system. You first work for your boss and then he pays you. He doesn't pay you first and then you follow his instructions. He gives you instructions. If you have followed them, he pays you. If you are raising a child, you want to give them instruction. You want to give them correction. You want to give them encouragement. If they have followed your instructions, then you give them a reward. But it's not the same up. Your authority is already worthy of your reward. Because you don't choose the worthiness of your authority. God already has. You don't choose whether your parents are worthy of honor. God already has. You don't choose if your pastor is worthy of honor. God already has done that. You must receive by faith what God said you must do. And so when you honor up to authority, one of the first things you want to give them is money. One of the last things you want to give down is money. There are different rules of honor. If you give a child money first, you will destroy the child in understanding that money is a reward system. Why is money so big to you? Because your money is you. Your money represents you. You go to work on a Monday morning, you give the best of your energy to your boss. You give the best of your mind. You have given up all your relationships. You've left your children at home. You have left your wife at home. You have gone to work. When you come back from work, you are tired. Your energy is drained. Your mind is tired. What is the reward at the end of the month or the end of the week for giving up the best of your energy, for giving up the best of your mind, for giving up the best of your relationships? Your reward is money. That's why God is so big on the tithe. Because it's a proof of honor to Him. He says, when you bring me your money, you're bringing me the best of you. You're bringing me the best of your energy. You're bringing me the best of your mind. You're bringing me the best of your relationships. That's why when we honor up to authority with our finances, we're giving, him the be- we're giving them the best of us. I remember when I was a young boy still in the house and I started working I would come home and bring my mother my full paycheck those days they did not transfer it into your bank account those days it came stapled in an envelope and I'd come home I'd say mommy here's all my money it is sealed now I used to tell my mother the whole month how much I loved her but the day I gave her the money the smile was bigger on her face than it was me telling her how much I love her 
Did that mean that my mother loved money more? No. My mother felt honored that her son would come home and have spent all his energy, all his mind, given his relationships, and come and present that to her as my authority. It was a proof of my honor. My mother felt so honored that I would do it. Honor. When you have an authority above you and he corrects you, it's a proof of his honor to you. If your pastor never corrects you, he is dishonoring you. His correction to you is saying to you, I love you enough. I love you enough. I care enough about your future to correct you. But you have no authority correcting up. Because every authority has an authority to correct them. It is the responsibility of their authority to correct them, not yours. One day I woke up in the middle of the night. And I was... Aspiring as I was waking in intercession, two o'clock in the morning, I was in deep intercession, and there was praying for Dr. Mike Murdoch, like never before. I pray for him every day, but that day I prayed deep travail of intercession, like never before. I woke up in praying in tongues. And as I was praying, the Holy Spirit said these words to me. I have now assigned you to Dr. Mike Murdoch. I couldn't believe it. I was thinking, what? What are you saying? This little boy from Cape Town, South Africa. 25 hours flight from Fort Worth, Texas. How can I be assigned to Dr. Murdoch? It makes no sense to me. How many of you know that when the Holy Spirit, he speaks to you. He only drops something in your spirit and then he leaves you to wonder. Now you are thinking about it. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? The next day I woke up and I want the media to get ready. I think we sent them a clip just to uh, show you. The next day it was about one o'clock in the morning. I was about to go to bed and the Holy Spirit said to me, Look at the tabernacle of Moses and I will explain to you what I mean that I have assigned you to Dr. Murdoch. Wow. Now, there it is. And I came to this picture. It's not very clear, but I will explain to you what that is. The tabernacle of Moses. Speaking about the outer court. Speaking about the holy place and the holy of holies. They were different sections. For those of you that did theology, you will understand what I'm talking about. This is not a new revelation or a new doctrine concerning the tabernacle. This is just how he spoke to me. God will always speak to you the way you understand him the best. Because I was in engineering and I understand drawings, he spoke to me like this. And then he said, can you see the outer court? It's the big part. Everything in the outer court is bronze. Everything in the holy place is gold. And then beyond the veil is the ark of the covenant in the holy of holies. The Lord said, this is what has happened to you now with Dr. Murdoch in your relationship. I have followed him for more than 20 years. The Lord said, the outer court is a place called respect. You've respected him. You have always spoken well of him. And those of you that were here that heard me teach about respect. Respect is a feeling. Respect is inward. Honor is different than respect. So you've respected him, the Lord said. And then when I met him, God said, you have gone to a different level where you now honor him. And that respect is like bronze, but honor is like gold. When you shine respect up, it looks like gold. But if you leave it, or if you shine bronze up, it looks like gold. But if you leave it, it will disappear quickly. 
And the Lord said to me, you have gone from respect to honor. Honor is when you start to serve a man and no longer just talk it with your mouth. You are no longer just saying, I love you, I care for you. Because while you are in a place of respect, it's easy for you to leave a church. When you are and come into a place of honor, you are now starting to serve and do things and you're putting your energy into the church. Honor is serving. Honor is not just a feeling. Honor is not just words. And then the Lord said to me, now you have gone beyond honor. But the place beyond honor is not what you choose. It's what you qualify for. You choose to respect. You choose to honor. But you qualify to be assigned. That is not to everyone. You qualify through the way you have served. And you don't qualify yourself. God qualifies you. When I got closer to serving Dr. Murdoch and working with him and now being assigned, God started speaking to me about starting Mike Murdoch Schools of Wisdom throughout South Africa. And then to go into Africa and then to go around the world. Because now I'm no longer just serving him. I'm also part of his legacy because I am assigned. When you enter a church, the first level you will enter on is a level of respect. I said to God, what about the disrespectful people that is also in the church? God said, I, that is not what I want my church to look like. What I'm telling you, son, is how the church should look. The first level I want them on is at least a level of respect. And then I want them to move to a level of honor where they now start serving and no longer just sitting. <clears throat> to a place of assignment next to a man of God. And then I started saying, but how does one look when he is assigned? Because he looks different to the normal Christian. He don't look like a normal Christian. And some of you show a lot of respect in the house of God. You have come here as family members to celebrate with these people. You have come and you're sitting and you're showing much respect. But I don't know how many people and how many of you will have the desire to want to serve in the house of God. That will be a proof of your honor to God and also to a man that God has placed in your city that you want to serve in the house of God. Once you have served in the house of God, God brings you to a place where you are qualified. And then he gave me some notes and I'm going to close with these few notes. I'm done. He gave me these notes. He said to me, this is what someone looks like that is qualified to be assigned to a man of God. Number one, he will have no desire to promote himself. Many people came to me and said, you're running Dr. Mike Murdoch schools of wisdom throughout South Africa. Why don't you run Clint Ross schools of wisdom? I said, I have no desire to run Clint Ross schools of wisdom. My desire is to promote my father. There's a place where you must move beyond honor into a place where God assigns you. Secondly, you will encourage others to love him too. Some of you want to be very close to your apostle. This is the proof that you can come close. That the Holy Spirit has assigned you to be close. I asked the Holy Spirit, why, why, must, you, why must you qualify us? He said, I will not allow, allow anybody to just come close to the anointing I have placed on a man. It is like flies in the ointment. You will encourage others to love him too. You won't come to church alone. You will tell others, come here. How my apostle is teaching. Come here. You will encourage others to come and also hear him. Number three, you will constantly think of ways to make him happy. You are not thinking of ways to disappoint him. 
You are thinking of ways. What can I do? You come to a point where his desires become your instructions. I have people in our church. I sit at the boardroom table with them. And all I say is, oh, I wish I had this. In two days, it's there. Because my desires become their instructions. They're looking for ways to make me happy. I walk in the mall, I think, Dr. Murdoch will like this. Dr. Murdoch, because I am assigned. I wonder if God has assigned you and to who? Do you even qualify? Number four, his enemies will become your enemies. You cannot drink a cup of tea with anyone who is criticizing a man of God that God assigned you to. You cannot go behind his back and speak negative things. Number five, you want to become a problem solver. You are looking at what things there are that is a problem in the life of the man of God. And you want to find ways of solving problems. If you couples can catch this early, your marriages will be beyond blessed. And finally, he said to me, his words will never offend you. That's a true sign that you have been assigned to a man of God in a church. His words will never offend you. Remember the woman that came to Jesus and Jesus looked at her and said, uh, and spoke to her and said, she's a dog. She said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the table. He was amazed at this woman's faith. He looked at her and said, this is not a normal, normal Christian. This is something else. His words could not offend her because she looked beyond his words to know my miracle is locked up in this man. When you are assigned to a man of God, his words will never offend you. I want to close with the words of Ruth. This is your words when you are assigned. Ruth said to Naomi in, first, in, in Ruth chapter 1 verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there... I will be buried. Zimbabwe, you all need to be in a church where you are assigned to a man of God. Where the blessing of the Lord can come upon you. Where it is no longer about you, but it's about advancing the kingdom of God. Because as you build His church, as you build the kingdom, God will build your business. God will build your family. God will look after your generations to come. Your children and your great-grandchildren will eat the fruits of what you do in the house of God. God will not leave you unrewarded. You will be blessed. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Thank you, Apostle. Will you come with me to the stage? Glory to God. There is a place beyond honor. It's a place of assignment where God assigns you to a man of God. I want to say to you, God has placed a man in your midst. God has placed a man in your midst. If you are visiting today and you are not in a church, I will encourage you that this is a great house to come to, to experience a man that God has placed. When you follow him, you will see the blessing of the Lord come to your life. I'm not just promoting him because he's my friend. I'm saying it because the word of God says it. When you believe a prophet, you will prosper. And all of you that are here, some of you in the week, we took up some envelopes of a thousand rands, South African rands. And people were sowing. If you have that envelope, get it ready quickly. If you have and you brought that envelope with you this morning. If you are part of the crowd, I've not promoted this, but you feel you want to sow a seed towards this house. 
of a thousand rand. You can partake. You can partake of this. This, I gave my testimony of how God blessed me in business. How He gave me business ideas. And then the Lord said to me, encourage them to sow a seed of a thousand towards that. So that God can give you uncommon ideas. I've made millions through ideas. Just an idea. Again, I'm sitting on an idea that's going to make me good money. I run the ministry. I am a pastor. But all I ask is just give me ideas. I have people working for me, doing all the ideas. I just have the idea. And God works it. If you quickly want an envelope, lift your hand. Lift your hand quickly. We want to get you. The ushers are here. They want to bring it to you quickly. Quickly. And then yesterday I spoke last night about honor appears in the Bible 145 times. Those of you that were here, I explained to you that 145 in the, in the Hebrew, the meaning of it is mantle or cloak. And I said when I discovered that, I took $145 every month and I started giving to Dr. Mike Murdoch because I want the mantle and the cloak of my father. And I called it my honor seed to him. And I asked some people to take envelopes for your honor seed. And I asked you for 145 rand because that's what my people also do. And they are seeing miracle upon miracle upon miracle. This is not a game. It's God's way of promoting and blessing His people. If you don't understand much of it, please get the previous recordings. Because I did teachings about this. If you want an envelope, quickly raise your hand. If you are in front, bring me some envelopes. If you are people in front, I would love to give you an envelope too. If you want to come, quickly. Those of you that has brought your thousand, you can come forward. I'm quickly going to pray. with. Is that okay, your Apostle? If you have brought your thousand, will you quickly come? It's my last service. I'm going to leave. I'm going to lay hands on you. Glory to God. Thank you. The Lord bless you. The Lord, come stay here. Stay Does here. that one the envelopes? Stay. You want to plant the 145 runs or 1,000? Please just come. 145 or 1,000? Please or come. 1, if you have brought it or if you still want to do it, you are welcome. Just come. Come. Listen, I am, I am a testimony of seed sowing. I have discovered it's God's investment system to bless His people. Please come. Pastor, come. There they are coming. Envelopes. If you need an envelope, please come. Bless you. Oh, your life will never be the same. Lord, let this be the poorest day. If you have two, just give to someone. When he calls One. my name. Hallelujah. Come stand closer. To shine. When he calls my name. Give to someone. He's time to shine. Come, I want to give you an envelope. Come. When he calls my name. Come closer. Stand closer. He's time to Come closer. Shine. Just I need more. I need more envelopes. Bless the Lord. Your life will never be the same. Today is the poorest day of the rest of your life. Hallelujah. If you need an envelope, just show me. He has spoken to me. He is done. It's time to shine. It's time to shine. It's time to shine. It's time to shine. I feel God's grace for breakthrough. I really do. There's some phenomenal testimonies you're coming, please. that will come from these meetings. The men of God cannot please come, come here to lie to you. Come. Walk here this and is connect. God. Just walk here, get this what you're supposed to get. This is God. Be sensitive. Labo shata tataya. Those that have brought their thousands. Glory, come. Those that have brought their thousand, come close. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. 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 
God is here. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This is the poorest day of the rest of your life. This is where things turn in your favor. Shaka ta poko so. Lift your hands to heaven. If you still want to come, you are welcome to come. Glory to God. Lift your hands to heaven. Father of heaven, we call upon you today. As these people's hands are raised before you. They are a different kind of people. They are people who want to mean something significant in the kingdom of God. And we raise them before you today. We raise their families before you today. We raise their businesses before you today. We pray for supernatural ideas to come into the hearts of these people. You say that you give witty inventions. This is what will come to them, God. Supernatural inventions, ideas that men have not even thought of that will come from the Spirit of God. I release the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon them today to receive to receive to receive ideas from the living God receive ideas from God receive ideas from God your life changes today watch her watch her watch her watch her your life changes today your life changes God what you've done for me the way you have done it for me do it for them do it for your people do it for them Lord do it for them in Jesus name they will be millionaires raised up for the kingdom of God. Glory. 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 Even if I haven't touched your head. Glory. You will receive from God. You will be raised up to do great exploits. In the kingdom of God. Ah, if you have your thousand. You can put it here. Those that took envelopes for the first time. Please write your name on there. If you can put the money in, do it now. I don't know when is the next service for them to be able to bring. Will you take this further, the instructions they must give? Thank you, Apostle. Stay here as Apostle will give you further instructions.